been good in that way. It is good, isn't it? We're going yeah. live now into the Facebook group. Cool. And then we'll start recording the podcast. So it goes live. Yeah, we're live. Hello, Facebook Business Brain. Uh, I can't even say it. <laughs> Hello to those of you in the Business Brain Food group on Facebook. I've got Mark Bunn here. Hey, good day, Hi, Mark. everyone. Good day. How lucky are we to have Mark? That's awesome. The so Mark's a former A4 footballer. Not that I know much about footy, Mark. I've got to apologize. <laughs> Can string two words together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had a few. Um, who else have I had that was AFL? I'm trying to Jeez, I've had other A4 footballers. And there was a fella who wrote a book about, it's called The, the Go Zone. Do you know that? Oh, one? yeah, Mark McKeon. Mark McKeon. He was awesome. Yep. He came it's on the fantastic. podcast. Yeah, and yeah, no, he's a good mate of mine. So, uh no, he's fantastic. Did you guys play together or? Uh, we didn't. He was, a, he'll like this. He was a little bit before me. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> but um, we've obviously in the, in the speaking space together in terms of health and life yeah. balance. And uh, we actually, he plays at the same golf club my parents play at. We're at the same gym there for a while. So um, we only live 10 minutes away from each other. So um, yeah, no, he's a, he's a ripping guy. Yeah, Mark's a great guy. He, um, I love his philosophy with the go zone. Have you read his book? I haven't, but I I know the general general philosophy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, he's been a, he's been a, a leader in the area for uh, for many years. So yeah, there you go. Uh, I think he stuff. took a lot of the principles from footy, which I've, maybe you did as well. We'll talk about that as we get stuck into it. So um, cool. for those of you in the business brain food group, I've got Mark on today for the podcast. As usual, you're getting early access to this amazing content. So how lucky are you? Uh, you also get to ask any questions live. I will be monitoring the questions over here. So if I look over here at all Mark, it's, I'm still paying attention. I'm just monitoring what's going on on the other screen. Uh, so if you do have questions for Mark as we go through this live, we are going to be talking to Mark about high performance in your business, health, happiness, well-being, and uh, we'll, we'll, we're going to dive straight into that very, very shortly. His, uh, his book's been doing very well as well, so we'll, we'll talk about that soon. Uh, so very, very exciting. Now what we'll do, Mark, is I'm going to get you to do the little pre-intro that I sent you that script for. Sure. So you can do that when you're ready. This is Mark Bunn. I help businesses and business people make the shift to health, happiness, and high performance through a blend of ancient Eastern medicine and the latest modern science. You're listening to the Business Brain Food Podcast. How good was that? Like a pro. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to take a few takes there, usually. Or... <laughs> no, 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 that's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Must be a good script writer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, so I'm going to do my intro now. Mark, just sit quietly. It'll make sense when to come on. Um, and, uh, yeah, it'll make 100%. You'll know when to come in. All right, are you ready to go? Yes. All righty. Well, welcome back to the Business Brain Food Podcast. This, my friend, is the podcast that is 100% devoted to taking you and your business to the next level. And the good news is it doesn't matter whether you're just brand new to this business thing, so maybe you're like myself and you're just scratching that. Um, I stuffed up my own intro. How good's that? <laughs> How good. I've done that before. <laughs> We're going to go again, take two. This is what I say, the people in the group get to see the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. And it, it doesn't end up on the polished production. Well, welcome back to the Business Brain Food Podcast. This, my friend, is the podcast that is 100% devoted to taking you and your business to the next level. And the good news is, it doesn't matter if you've been in business for a long, long time like myself, or if you're just brand new to business, and you're just scratching that entrepreneurial itch. There's always something new we can do to take our business to the next level. And today is absolutely no different. Very, very shortly, I'll get Mark Bunn on the show. We're going to talk about all things health, wealth, and high performance in business, which is going to be a lot of fun. Before we do that, just a reminder that today's episode is brought to you by MaxMyProfit.com.au. The team at MaxMyProfit help you build the business you imagine. So if you imagine having a business that was more fun, maybe we gave you more time and money to do things things you would love to do in life, but instead you've ended up with something that's a bit clunky, a bit like a ball and chain, something that's unfun, that maybe even leaves you worrying about how you're going to pay your next bill. You might want to talk to the team at maximoprofit.com.au. They're on standby to help you build the business that you imagined. All righty. So uh, for those of you that are tuning in uh, to the podcast, just a reminder that we do have the online Facebook group as well. So right now we are streaming live into the Facebook group. They're getting early access to this content. You could be getting this too. If you just head across to facebook.com and look for business brain food, join the group and come and hang out with over a thousand entrepreneurs. We're talking all things business, getting early access to content like this. 
and having a good jolly old time and you are missing out. So head across here, look for the business Brain Food Group. Also, leave your honest review or rating in your favorite podcast player. We do read all of your reviews. We love to get your feedback. It's really important to us that we know you're enjoying the show or if there's something you'd like to see improved, we'd love to help you and uh, improve whatever it might be that you got. We, we love taking your suggestions on board. Absolutely sensational. All righty. So today is all about talking about health, happiness and high performance in business. I'm joined by Mark Bunn. He's a former professional AFL footballer trained in both Western Health Science and Eastern Medicine, a three times best-selling author of Ancient Wisdom for Modern Health. In fact, we are just talking before I hit record and he has sold over 30 thousand copies of that book isn't that just insane so good he's one of australia's most booked health and wellness speakers specializing in healthy leadership and higher conscious and business success he's also the ceo of the david lynch foundation of australia which teaches transcendental meditation transcendental meditation to those experiencing extreme trauma welcome to the show mark Ben, great to be here. I hear a lot of good things about the show, so I'm very excited. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Yeah, it's a good pleasure to have you on as well. Uh, I've heard some good things about what you're up to. Maybe we can uh, dive straight in and talk a bit about, um, you know, how you ended up getting into this field because it's quite a shift mm. from footy into this. It is a big shift, yeah. I remember the first press releases we used to do, it was around the idea of, uh, you know, the um, brawny footballer teaching meditation and yoga because that was often uh, a, quite a contrast to, to yeah. uh, those in the media so but it was always as a fascination I guess from football everything's about performance and getting the best out of yourself and to be honest I wasn't the world's greatest footballer by any means I often just made up the numbers so I was lo always looking for an edge or a competitive advantage in the performance area of how I could sort of um, try and make the highest level so um, when I finished my quite inglorious football career, I'd always wanted to transfer that to sort of coaching clients and business people, which of course is around the same principles, you know, high performance, sustained performance, how we recover and uh, get back to being our best with focus and clarity and getting the job done within a business environment. So there's a lot of basic principles that I think transfer across between sport and business um, more and more these days. It's amazing to see that, actually. I mean, I've spoken to quite a few athletes on this show over the years mm. and uh, that are now doing things that are helping businesses grow. And it, it, it really does apply really well to business, doesn't it? A lot of the learnings. What were some of the key things that you took away from your footy career that have helped you build your businesses? Well, I think, um, I think as we all, you know, self-development books, motivational speakers, the, the principles are universal. And that's all about what I do. I believe there's wisdom right back thousands and thousands and thousands of years from the Eastern traditions, you know, the traditional cultures, the healthiest people in the world. That's what I studied because I believe the same principles apply. And I think what we'll all agree is that 90% of success happens between the ears. That was something anyone who's played sport always hears about. It's what goes on, you know, in your head that determines um, whether you win. Most people have generally speaking, you know, a similar level of skills and endurance and, you know, whatever it is, but it's what happens between the ears. Michael Jordan documentary on the last couple of weeks on uh, Netflix. I think everyone was fascinated just with how he, you know, got himself up week after week. And it was just, you know, it's a mental focus and application. I think that's what we're seeing in business. You know, there's so much information going around the globe at the moment, we all have access to that same information and the technology, but it's what people do differently in their mind space that uh, really determines, you know, the high achievers from uh, the also rands. Yeah. Like you said, I mean, when you first launched and the, the media sort of grabbed a hold of the fact there's a brawny footballer gone into this meditation, you know, healthy wellbeing sort of mm. um, space, it is not something that is, a lot of people are comfortable with. It's out of people's comfort zones because it is a bit different, isn't it? It is. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the beauty of this blend of ancient Eastern wisdom, but also using modern science. And we all tend to want to have a scientific verification of whatever we do. And that's the beauty of science today, that it's telling us that the absolute leading edge of business today is meditation, the ability to transcend, to develop what I call consciousness, which is the source of all our emotional intelligence, our mindset, our positivity. Um, we hear a lot about positive psychology, but most people 
understand that if you've had a you know relationship breakup or your boss has given you a hard time at work or you're in a toxic re relationship um, it's very hard to just on a conscious level shift your mindset to be a happy enthusiastic positive mm. member of your team and so getting to these deeper levels that science is now verifying through neuroscience and brain mapping and these sort of technologies show us that what we devote to developing consciousness really leverages in terms of you know added resilience focus concentration um, and even what we might get into later is what they call the genius lounge which is a part of our brain which is the latest cutting edge of science that it's not just what we do with our brains in terms of activity in terms of focus and sort of the performance aspects but it's what we do on in the downtime can we give our brains a rest which actually unlocks the imagination centers in our brain and where we get all our amazing ideas for new business ideas or how to do something better in our marketing and it's a combination of these two which is the whole principle of ancient science that we have rest and activity we have winter we have summer it's not just more and more activity and so um yeah no it's a fascinating blend yeah and how did you come across it is this something that you know other friends or family were involved in or is it something you researched how did you end up getting involved um, well, as I said, when I was, uh, so I started my AFL career, um, I was 19 and like, I'm serious. I wasn't the best footballer by any means. So I was always looking for an advantage. And after my third senior game, my brother-in-law, who was a Victorian wicketkeeper at the time, Michael Dimitina, um, he and my sister had just been taught something called transcendental meditation. And they suggested I should learn it, would help my sport, my focus, recovery. And so I did it. And this is, you know, getting on 30 years ago. And I absolutely loved it. It was quite different to what most people associate with meditation, which is, you know, it's hard work and you've got to discipline your mind. With transcendental meditation, it's just completely effortless. You get a mantra, 20 minutes twice a day. And I just loved it. It sort of gave me more energy, more focus. It dealt with the stress of, you know, AFL a lot more. And it just helped my recovery too. You know, the big thing with sport that we're now seeing in business is it's not just pounding out the sort of um, the KPIs or meeting the sales targets, but it's that ability to switch off at the end of a day or a weekend mm -hmm. and actually get really good quality rest both in terms of brain physiology, but physically as well. So we recharge and then we're ready for the new, the new venture or the new business week or motivating the team or whatever it is. So um, yeah, it was, that's how I got into it. Yeah. Okay. And so, and uh, I guess they say, the, you know, they say the, the rest is history. Here you are today, <laughs> written a book, sold over 30,000 copies, got another book on the way. Um, high, you know, very sought after speaker and trainer across the globe, helping people with this stuff. What are some of the, can you give us some of the success stories or some of the, uh, you know, case studies of where you've gone in and helped a business to, you know, embrace, I guess, this medicine and, and techniques to get high performing people? Yeah, no, absolutely. So basically the model we use is um, usually it's a keynote address. So most companies, you know, small, medium, large will have a, annual offsite event where they go away usually it's for a couple of days and they drink themselves to into oblivion and mm -hmm. you know wake up with a hangover at nine o'clock the next morning and get the health speaker in to tell them how to be healthy which is which is me but we usually yeah would come in at one of those conferences or an in-house training and just set the scene in terms of the importance of health and well-being not only for personal um, performance but just for a business performance and again that's what the research is showing whereas you know our sales and our leadership and our sort of um, employee management and engagement in the past were sort of seen as like the hard sciences and where we'd spend our money now it's mental health physical health emotional resilience if you're not looking after those in a workplace then you just can't compete so we start with that and then what would generally happen is that will transfer into um, either some online training with a select group um, within the organization or a series of small workshops or little breakout sessions you know on site um, where we deliver sort of um, ongoing training so it depends on the group and the size and the makeup and whether it's a you know just a senior executive team or whether it's a employee group or um, yeah. but yeah that's generally how it works. And what sort of turnarounds have you seen? Have you gone into companies where they're they're sort of all tired and exhausted and, 
you know, burn because and people get burnt out, right? It's when we run our yeah. own businesses and in uh, if we're in sales, it doesn't matter what we do, right? People get burnt out these days very easily. There's so much going on. We got so many distractions in our life. Have you? What sort of turnarounds have you seen by people embracing this? Yeah, um, generally the main ones we get are um, weight loss, um, energy, and sleep. They're the big three I tend to work on. So usually after a three month um, period, so 12 weeks, we get a high, and it's not everyone because not everyone needs to lose weight, but often we'll get um, 10, 15, 20K um, weight loss, not necessarily all in the three months, but we'll start that process. Um, sleep is a massive one. So we usually do a bit of an evaluation with sleep, usually about 75% of the business groups we work with. Um, people in there have issues with sleep, whether that's not being able to get to sleep at the required time, or they get to sleep and wake up between 2 and 3 a.m. in the morning, which from an Ayurvedic medicine, Eastern medicine understanding, we go into and understand that. Um, and then energy levels. Usually we can get 15, 20, 25% improvement in energy levels as well. And it's a lot to do with um, physiological cycles. So a lot we do in this setup phase is and it comes from this sort of eastern wisdom that there's a body clock and so it's not just what we do in the health and wellness space most businesses and business people you know you've got to focus on eating good food and getting enough exercise and sleep but the eastern complement to that is it's not just what you do but when you do it and this is again the latest modern science they call it circadian medicine or chronobiology that it's not just how many calories you take in but when you do it and you can get massive and i'm talking massive shifts in performance energy levels quality of sleep weight loss by just getting people to move their main meal of the day or their main intake of calories from the evening when the sun's setting towards the middle of the day to mimic the natural cycle which is as the sun moves through the sky in the middle of the day the sun's at its peak the internal sun which is our digestive fire that cooks our food if we take in calories during the day we burn it up more effectively we assimilate the nutrients we absorb we that's when we want to drive our business success and then we get home at night and the body's switching down it's going into its sleep cycle so we want to have a much lower intake of food and even intermittent fasting or these sort of more modern regimes using them intelligently so we maximize the sleep sleep phase so it's a long-winded answer to um, your question but yeah it's mainly around energy sleep and weight loss is where we've seen the real big yeah okay. big, uh, benefits to companies three points so what's ayurvedic medicine what is that that's yeah so ayurveda or ayurvedic medicine is deemed by the world health organization to be the longest continuous system of healthcare in the world so it goes back many many thousands of years and it's a traditional system tied to indian medicine but deeper than that the real wisdom of ayurveda is that it's the laws of nature that govern life so if we think about our world we take a step back from our busy lives and our family and our work and we just think about our universe there's a certain intelligence that runs life the planets revolve around the sun the seasons come at certain times a baby's born and it grows in a certain intelligent manner you know the arms are in a certain location they're not where the legs are the heart's in a certain location and it grows according to a pattern and an intelligence and so all of nature has this inbuilt intelligence and so we humans according to ayurveda are intimately connected with this intelligence. And there are certain laws of nature that govern our digestion, our metabolism, our sleep-wake cycles, our seasonal routines, that if we can live in tune with those laws, it's like a surfer who's riding a wave. The wave, nature does all the work, and the surfer just enjoys the ride. It's fun, it's exhilarating. And that's how life is meant to be according to Ayurveda. Everything flows in sequence. We eliminate wastes, we digest food, we sleep at the right time. We don't get sick. We live to a nice ripe old age and that's how life's meant to be. It's only when we violate or go against mother nature's laws 
that we get all the problems that we do in our Western world. We sleep at the wrong times, we eat the wrong foods according to our body type, we don't wake up to the sun, we do all these things against the natural cycles and therefore we get sick, we get poor energy, we put on weight and business goes backwards. So um, that's essentially Ayurveda. It's just the simple wisdom of life, natural yeah. laws, how to live in tune with them. And have you done any studies on connections to bad health and, you know, being, I guess, lacking energy and business performance? I haven't done any studies per se, but there's certainly been um, many that have done, obviously, like most studies, um, America, Europe, but a lot of the big companies now, the Googles, the Facebooks, the Microsofts are investing huge amounts of money in tracking exactly that. Um, and that's where this whole, you know, the last five or six years, this real skyrocketing of focus on particularly mental health and what they call presenteeism. You know, a decade or two ago, there was all this research showing that um, poor health practices, burnout, stress would mean that people wouldn't come to work. You'd have a certain percentage of absenteeism and that equated to a certain um, cost to your business usually in the billions of dollars in big industries. But what they're showing now is that it's not so much just the people who aren't at work, it's the people who present to work. They're there, they're at their desk, but their productivity is so low, they may as well be at home and sick in bed. And so it's what they call it presenteeism. And similarly, it's costing businesses mm. millions and billions, depending on the size of the business and the industry so so people are turning up but they're not productive and that's exactly uh, yeah okay yeah so how does how does this help businesses with that like what what how do we tie this ayurvedic medicine and the techniques and the, the meditation to becoming more productive exactly how does that work um well it's been really interesting over the last three or four months because with COVID 19 with businesses and business people being forced to work remotely or work from home, it's actually provided a great opportunity to start to integrate a lot of these principles because that is the challenge. And my philosophy is always practicality. You know, we need to get the business results. There's no use having a business where it's all, you know, fluffy and, you know, go and do yoga in the morning and have an hour lunch break and smell the flowers and then the business goes bust, you obviously want to have that balance. But what, what has happened with COVID-19 is particularly with the reduction in the commute to work, some business people are saving themselves an hour, sometimes two hours with commuting back and forward to the office that has freed up a whole extra hour or two that they can start to have what's called a more flexible work life, which means they can do what's best according to their internal body clock, which is the Ayurvedic wisdom starting the day, getting outside, some sunlight exposure. We know the importance of sunlight through the eyes. Indirect sunlight um, improves our mood, um, sets up our sleep-wake cycle. So the ability to get to sleep at night, according to Ayurveda, is not what we do at 7 or 8 p.m. It starts from the moment we wake up. Natural sunlight through the eyes regulates that sleep-wake cycle. We sleep at the right time at night. Um, at regulates all our endocrine functions, our hormones, and particularly um, psychology. So positive psychology mood is regulated by this early morning sunlight. People can take time to have a mini lunch break during the middle of the day, which we often don't do when we're in an office environment. You know, people, you know, got emails to do or, you, you know, we push through lunch and we just eat at the desk, which is not good long term. And that ability at the end of the working day to actually take time to do some meditation or get some exercise and transition into the nighttime cycle. So I think it's it's been a great learning over the last few months. And now that more and more business people are going back into a work environment, I think one, there's a more flexibility from senior managers, senior executives, that they can work maybe a little bit more from home or they can have slightly more flexible working hours. And then from an individual standpoint, they're able to take some of those best practices that they've been using in terms of spending more time with the kids or doing exercise at different times and hopefully integrating that back into their sort of um, workplaces when they get back to it. So, um, mm, so nice and practical. Definitely yeah. it's been interesting to see with the change with the COVID-19, how that has changed people's 
uh, working day. There's no doubt about that, is it? Like people, absolutely. You know, I've, I've I've spoken to people. Their offices are just they're never going back. You know, they're like. Ah. We've all been told to work remotely now. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's, and it's great in lots of ways. Um, it's going to be challenging in others, but I certainly wouldn't want to be in commercial real estate no. um, at the moment because I think a lot of big businesses are going to um, definitely reduce their office space and have people working from home more or maybe just having a day a week where certain teams come in and have a bit of face-to-face. And uh, so, yeah, and I, was, I think there's a big change to the landscape. Yeah. Now you talk about po- uh, positive psychology and, you know, I think um, people that are struggling mentally, like we talk about me- with mental health, I think people that are struggling mentally, they, um, you know, they're trapped in their own little world and people that aren't struggling mentally or never have can't understand that. So yeah. how does a business leader, uh, you know, w- you know, with a team of people help somebody through that if w- with, you know, some of these techniques, how does, how can you help a team become more high performing? If someone's psychology, yep. their psychology is not good, if they're not positive, um, and it's very hard for them to understand why, isn't it? So how do they Absolutely. help? Yeah. Absolutely fantastic question. Um, what I think is happening, and I actually learnt this from football, you know, you're talking about this link between sports and business. We've seen a big shift, and I know you're not big in the AFL and those in Sydney and Queensland, but in the AFL particularly over the last 20 years there's been a big shift from coaches traditionally it was the you know the hard-headed coaches do it my way or the highway there was no sort of buy-in from players you just had to do it there's a lot of fear involved whereas and a a guy that I played football with um, Paul Ruse who was the coach of the Sydney Swans and later Melbourne um, I believe he started a big shift where it was a much more personal connection with the players so it wasn't this sort of heavy-handed do as I say. It was more a um, an even, you know, conversational. Get to know the person away from football. So not just what's happening in terms of their training loads and their performance, but you know, how's the relationship going? How are you going with your kids? You know, finances. And so that's what we know about mental health and psychology. It's the conversation and just being heard. And even if you haven't solved the problem for someone, just being able to allow them to get it off their chest is is key to it. So I think that's the first step with any business leader, boss is just sometimes taking the business hat off and just being, you know, inverted commas, a friend or having a chat, you know, non-business stuff, getting to know the person away from, from what their business role is. And the second half of it is, Again, coming back to research, because we all love the data and the research, there's a guy called Sean Acor. And for want of a better term, he's a happiness guru. He's basically his life's mission is researching positive psychology, Harvard trained, but he's actually traveled the world, 45 different countries, researched hundreds of business groups and shown that there are three simple activities that we can do on a daily basis, which takes about two minutes a day two minute investment to get 31% increase in productivity, 37% improvement in sales, 19% faster and more accurate and reductions in um, burnout, improved creativity, resilience, and most health outcomes. And those three activities, in addition to meditation and exercise, are things we've all heard of over the last few years, they're simple, but most people don't actually do them as daily practices. One is gratitude. So he would get people to write down three things that they're grateful for in their life each day. And it's really important that they write them down. A lot of people listening will say, oh yeah, I've heard about gratitude. We had a speaker come in last year, but everyone's talking about gratitude these days. And we sort of think we do it, but we don't do it as a daily practice. And this is what he showed. It's actually, actually writing it down is different to just thinking it and doing it. What separates the high performers and those that are able to maintain good mental health is that they have simple daily practices that become rituals. They don't just sort of think it, they actually do it. And the second one is what they call journaling or reliving the positive. And that's simply writing a sentence or two of the best thing that's happened in the last 24 hours of your life. So the example you gave in a business environment, you're a business leader, you've got someone who's an employee or something that's is doing it tough or in a home environment, you've got one of your kids or even yourself, you've had a really 
crappy day, everything's gone wrong, your kids are sick, you've smashed the car, you lost a business deal. But what is one thing that went well? Maybe you're a little bit more resilient when than you were last year when the same thing happened. Maybe a friend rang you up and just gave you a compliment or you know, someone at work came and put their arm around you and you know, just made you feel good. So just focusing on that actually helps to strengthen the neuronal connections in our brain for those functions and outcomes. When we don't do it, they atrophy just like a physical muscle. And we actually create stronger connections between different parts of the brain. And so what Sean's research shows that it takes 21 days, 21 days of doing these activities, we can actually start to rewire our brain functioning. So that rather than seeing the negative in a situation as our default, which is what happens when we get into a bad space, you know, ah, shit, he said this, and oh, it always goes wrong for me, you know, the boss doesn't give a crap about me, and I'm never going to reach my targets. 21 days, we can actually have a positive thought as our natural default. And the third one is a random or conscious act of kindness. So in the business research, what they would do is they would get business people, the very first email of their day, before they did anything else, their first email would be to someone in their professional or personal network, simply praising them or thanking them for something they'd done. So a 30 second email, make someone else's day, make them feel good. In the Eastern wisdom, they call it karma. Western medicine, it's the law of reciprocity, whatever we want to call it, but it just makes us feel better, more energy, better focus, and we get on with the day. So those three activities anyone can do in two minutes, get a gratitude journal or something that just sits beside your bed in the morning or at your work desk, work desk last thing at night before you go home. And um, it's amazing that the difference it can and do. So as a business leader, you can actually buy those journals for your team, you know, whether it's a management team or employee team, um, a mother or a father can buy them for the kids or often use dinner. You know, I can get um, families to do an evening dinner. So you check in, you do gratitude around the table before you have dinner. Even there might be negative things to discuss. You know, it might be a crappy day as a family unit, which you need to discuss, there's no problem but not necessarily just diving straight into the negative stuff, starting pre-framing it with some gratitude and then getting into that stuff. And the same in a business model, you know, staff meetings or team meetings, yeah. starting on the positive and then- Do you ever find that business uh, people have a res resistance from certain people in the team to doing some of this stuff? Look, like it's a bit, might yep. be out of their comfort zone. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's you know, anything new always, uh, can throw up uh, challenges and obstacles. And, uh, and again, that's why I think that first step is always as a business leader is just creating those little personal connections. So it may not be, and that's maybe where you're leading to that in certain business environments, we wouldn't actually get the CEO or the senior director or manager to implement a strategy like that straight away because there might be too much resistance and particularly, you know, the old school thinking that business is about business and don't talk to me about my personal life. And so, yeah, every business is going to be different, but I think it's always that personal connection first, just sort of getting behind the scenes a little bit um, to what makes people tick. And it's, it's motivation at the end of the day, everything's motivation and natural skill sets. When people, and this is the Ayurvedic or the ancient wisdom, when people are doing what their natural skill sets align with, we're all got different strengths and talents. When we are doing activities that are lined up with those strengths and talents, then life flows. We do it well to a high level of performance. We don't get as stressed. There's less burnout. And then when we combine that with purpose or some sense of service, then that's your sort of golden formula. And in businesses, it's exactly the same. Where businesses go wrong is they've got a role that needs to be filled, whether it's in HR or sales or marketing, and they may not have the right person or they don't have time to source the right person for it. So they get Jack or Jenny from the you know, next apartment to fill in temporarily and they're not designed to do that role. So they don't have the skill set. So they get stressed. You know, They get burned out. They don't sleep well. Um, they hate their job. 
they start smoking, you know, the sort of thing. And so that's where it all comes back, trying to peel back those things, getting to the basics, which is getting people to do what they're naturally good at and what they enjoy. It's things we've all heard about. We hear about it every day. Every book we read it's the same things. It's just a matter of trying to get the getting it done practical things to get it done yeah you said very practical and it, and it sounds like it's worthwhile giving it a go i mean what'd you say 31 percent increase in productivity 31 percent. yeah the guy's sean acor which is a-c-h-o-r um and his book is called the happiness advantage um so he details all that a lot of this stuff i spoke earlier about the googles and the facebooks um how they are you know strategies they're using um to sort of improve work pro productivity and it's not through pushing their staff more and trying to get every last drop of blood out of them. It's about, you know, in Patagonia, for example, have surfboards in their, um, the lower um, floors of their office. People can go surfing in the middle of the day and it's all around, it's around results. As long as you get the job done in the time frame, you can go for a surf in the middle of the day or you can ride a scooter around the office or jump on a beanbag or do whatever you like. And it's just that flexibility to, use people's different body clocks because everyone's got a different cycle when they perform better. Um, but yeah, not getting too, too rigid. So yeah, the happiness advantage, Sean Acor, 31% increased productivity, 37% improvement in sales. Pretty cool. Sounds like a worthwhile read as well. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fantastic. Sounds like a book everyone should be reading. So tell us, uh, what do you see uh, moving forward? I mean, you spoke about some of these bigger companies and some of the things they're doing, like surfboards and going for a surf, and that would scare a lot of business leaders. <laughs> yeah. I have heard, like I've heard of places that have got ping pong tables or billiard tables or whatever, pinball machines, and yeah. um, that would scare a lot of leaders that you just get people loafing off. Yeah, absolutely. So there's two keys to that is one, it comes back to the, everything's a conversation. So they're just examples and it will, it will vary depending on the demographic of your business, the type of business, the outcomes you want. And it's not, it's not surfing versus ping pong tables versus anything else. It's what is meaningful for the business person or the employee. And that's from a conversation. For some people, it's just getting paid more. And in most cases, it is what most business people want is more money or more flexibility to, you know, have a decent family or personal life. It's actually not to surf in the middle of the day at work or play mm. ping pong. So that's the conversation piece. Um, and then it's making it practical that around that you've got really good value systems and your clear vision and your boundaries about what their KPIs are and what they have to contribute or achieve in order to get that that benefit so like anything it's a conversation like a relationship you know a personal relationship or a business relationship hopefully it comes out as a win-win you know yeah. the company wins and the individual wins and that's where your um you know your loyalty from an employee comes from you know they're engaged they feel fulfilled they're using their natural talents so they're not going to look elsewhere and uh, go somewhere else hopefully yeah, well, it sounds to me like the the idea of people getting healthy as well, not just from a physical point of view, but from a mental point of view, is really important for performance. Yep. But, you know, they're there because they don't know how to be anywhere else. Is the way I look at it. You know, otherwise they wouldn't be there. No one wants to be a low performer. Nobody wants yeah. to be happy. Nobody wants to be lacking sleep. Nobody wants to be stressed. Yep. But they end up there because they don't know how not to be there. Yes. So, so, what do you see the trends are moving forward? So people don't end up there. How do how do how do business leaders really guide their teams over the next couple of years to make sure they are building a team of high performers? Hmm. I think the biggest one is um, I touched on this earlier consciousness. So I have a talk um, called the Consciousness Revolution, and I believe over the next decade, the biggest change is is advanced meditation techniques. So today, most businesses have some form of meditation or mindfulness. Individual business people have a you know, meditation app or some sort of thing that they do. But what the science is showing is it's three distinct types of meditation. We have focused attention, what they call open monitoring, which is mindfulness. And then there's automatic self-transcendence. And so transcend actually means to go beyond. And so there are techniques such as transcendental meditation, which I learned, which allows the mind to actually go beyond the busy, active, agitated, gotta gotta mind. You know, they call it the monkey mind in the Eastern traditions. And what the science shows is that when you can 
use these techniques that within a few minutes, the mind can settle down to a level where you get peak what's called EEG coherence and they call it brain mapping. And so I believe the big shift within companies is one getting the workforce to do it. If you look at the most creative people on the planet, you look at the highest performing people on the planet, the Hugh Jackmans, the Tim Ferrises, the Ray Delios, the Adriana Huffingtons, they all transcend twice a day. And nearly every one of them says that it's that daily practice is why they are able to say sustained peak performance. So again, it's not the externals. This is going to be the shift. It's not about what we do physically, food, exercise, you know, sort of leadership or management stuff. It's what's going inside, developing our brains to be able to do more in less time, more efficiently. So and from, uh, I think from, that's from going to be the biggest. From a practical standpoint, is this something you do in the office? Or is this Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, no, TM's beautiful because it's, you don't need an app. There's nothing external. Once you've learnt, you learn over four days, about an hour per day. And at the end of that four days, you have a, a mantra. It's a sound that's given to you by a teacher that allows your mind to just settle down. They call it, it's like diving, you know, diving, you just pick a correct angle and then nature does the rest, you know, gravity takes over and that's how easy true meditation is. So yeah, once you've done that, you're self-sufficient. So in businesses, um, very common today, they'll have a meditation room or the boardroom or before work and the whole business will come often and do a 15 or 20 minute meditation together or they do it individually, start the day with that focus and clarity. And at the end of the day, Again, it's fantastic. It's that perfect transition from work. You know, we've been busy and productive, but maybe there's a lot on our mind and what a lot of business people struggle with. We know that interferes with their sleep and their ability to recharge and have good quality relationships at home is the ability to switch off from work. Mm. So even if they go home, they're at dinner with the family and the kids and the wife or the husband and the mind's still going, you know, what they didn't get done at work and da -da -da, interferes with their sleep. So TM is perfect. It's the perfect ability to transition the mind down into its relaxed state. And then we can uh, have good quality relationships and recharge for the next day. So, yeah. And now if I've previously tried other meditation types and found them difficult, and you, I mean, you mentioned earlier, this was quite easy to do. Are you saying this would be something that I should be giving a go? I think it. I think it's great for everyone. I did a um, podcast myself two days ago with a guy called Bob Roth. Bob Roth wrote a book called um, Strength in Stillness. Um, Bob Roth is a 45-year meditation teacher. He's the, basically a meditation advisor to Hugh Jackman, Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, um, Jerry Seinfeld, you name it. He's like the Hollywood um, meditation man. And he, he, he just outlines this whole different meditations. It's not that one's necessarily better than an, another. It's like physical fitness. You know, 20 years ago, as a fitness advisor, it was all around aerobic fitness. You know, you, business people would go for a jog or a run or a walk. It was about aerobic cardiovascular. Now we know that it's not just enough to do aerobic fitness. You have to get strength training. You know, you've got to go to the gym or um, do Pilates. or And then there's also flexibility. So it's all three. And it's the same with the mind focused attention um, can be good in certain situations. Mindfulness is fantastic. Many people listening will do a mindfulness practice and it's terrific, um, you know, as a circuit breaker for stress, good for anxiety, um, all these things. But transcending um, and TM is a completely different and unique aspect. So yeah, I'd really encourage um, everyone to look into that as well. It's a, it's a yeah. four day program. It's a more higher investment in terms of time and money, but also um, it's great uh, technique to have in the pocket. Like you said, very hard to switch off these days, especially when we've got these uh, mobile devices and <laughs> yeah. notifications going off all the time. Yeah, yeah. Having a tool to be able to, to switch off and, and shift gears is really important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, mate, we're just about out of time. I'm really grateful for you sharing your thoughts on this. And I know people have got a lot out of this, uh, but they may want some more info. Is there a way that they can get some more info from you or maybe get a copy of your book or where, where can they go? Yeah, absolutely. My website is Mark Bun. So it's B-U-N-N dot com dot A-U. 
And uh, yeah, on there, there's some um, links to the about the meditation. There's links to grab the book or they can jump on Amazon to get the book, which is um, ancient wisdom for modern health, um, as well as all the, the speaking, you know, for uh, small, medium, large businesses, um, whether it's in-house training or conferences or even we're doing a lot of virtual conferences these days with webinars with businesses, um, you know, working remotely. So uh, anything like that, uh, yeah, can all be on the website, markbun.com.au. Yeah, virtual's the new the new norm, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's fun. It's virtual webinars, virtual this, virtual that. <laughs> uh, I would have loved to have had shares in Zoom. Let me tell you. Oh, haven't they done well? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, so. they have. And it's, I mean, look, it's good for business because it increases efficiency. I think, like you know, one of the messages that's definitely clear from you is that it is about um, having a, a more balanced day. Yes, and, and and that enables a bit more time for self, doesn't it? And I think that's where people have gone a little bit wrong with businesses. You hear these entrepreneurs that get onto YouTube or whatever, and they talk about doing eighteen hour days, hustle, hustle, yeah. hustle is the way to succeed. But you know, is that really the way? I don't know. I don't think yeah. so. Well, I always Brown. I know we're on time here, but just quickly, I always come back to nature. You know, this is this beautiful mm. blend with using these ancient simple wisdoms of life which have been around for tens of thousands of years and then mimicking that in our modern business environment but mother nature who is the epitome of efficiency and she works on the principle of rest and activity so mother nature doesn't just work on activity it's not just about the hurricane or the you know the winds or the tornadoes within that is rest so winter is to summer what night is today and so the principle is the more dynamic or deep or profound you can have the rest the more dynamic and profound is the activity and that's where businesses have to get to it's not just more and more activity because that's burnout that's stress and that's not enjoying the process it's having these things in place that you can recharge and reset good quality sleep good quality relationships taking time out to just do nothing and this is this whole idea of the the, um, the genius lounge in the brain, the best ideas, the imagination centers are utilized and expanded and maximized when we rest. It's like the best ideas come in the shower, not when you're in the office. And so the downtime and the rest will not be seen in a few years as a detriment to business. They'll be actually seen as the foundation of business success. So that's where we're heading. Beautiful insights. So get your rest, people. Yeah. <laughs> rest. Rest up. You want a more productive team? Then you let them rest. Yeah. <laughs> and teach Indeed. them meditation. Go and get a meditation course. Sounds awesome. Well, if you want more information and if you really are serious about a high-performance business, then you need to get across to markbun.com.au and check out Mark's website. He's got a, his book out as well. Make sure you grab a copy of that. Thanks again, Mark, for joining us. But I can't say uh, thanks enough. It's been great chatting with you, buddy. Thanks, Ben. And uh, yeah, thanks to all listeners. And uh, again, congrats on the uh, fantastic show that you have. Thank you, buddy. Now, we'll make sure that all the links that we've spoken about, including titles of books or people or anything that we've spoken about, will be in all the show notes. So you can head across to businessbrainfood.com.au. This is episode 258, or you can just search for Mark Bunn. This episode will come up and you'll find all the links of everything that we discussed in today's show there for you to click on making it nice and easy for you to be able to visit any of those things, whether it's websites, books, Amazon stores, et cetera. We'll make sure that they're easy for you to get. Now, if you have enjoyed today's episode, please make sure you leave an honest review or rating in your favorite podcast player. We do get them all we love to read your reviews and hear what it is that you think if there's something you think we can improve let us know that as well we'd love to get your feedback this show is for you after all you know it's all, all about making sure we give you the value that you want and the content that you enjoy so make sure you leave that feedback for us as well for those of you that have been watching this live streamed into the business brain food facebook group thanks for joining us live today uh, if you're not in there you can join that group it is free to join uh, just look for business brain food group on facebook and uh, join that group and come along and join over a thousand entrepreneurs in there having a good old conversation about all things business and uh and yeah just uh, networking away but also getting early access to this amazing content so you can join us there just a reminder that today's episode was brought to you by maxmyprofit.com.au if you're looking for somebody to help you build the business you imagined then head across to maxmyprofit.com.au the team there are ready to help you build a business that works without you having to be there all right well i've been ben future you've been fantastic for tuning in till the end of the podcast thanks again and until next time have a profitable day. See ya.
Alrighty, well, that's the episode recorded. We're still live. I can see Mel is actually watching this live as well. G'day, Mel. How are you going? G'day, Mel. <laughs> to see some people watching us live there inside there. Thanks again, mate. Really do appreciate it. It's been Pleasure. Great. You on? No, thanks, buddy. Fantastic. I'm going to end the Facebook live.